Hey guys, good morning and welcome back to uh, today's Camp Fraser from Home. My name is Melinda, I'm a teaching artist and historical interpreter. And today I'm really excited to share a super cool pilot who's from right here in Kentucky. Now her name was Willa Brown and Willa Brown was the first African-American woman pilot in the country. Now here's the thing, there was another black woman pilot before her, her name was Bessie Coleman, but the difference is that Bessie had to go all the way to France to get her license because at the time, uh, America did not allow uh, black women to get a pilot's license at all. So she had to go elsewhere. So Willa was the first woman to actually get her license here in the country. Uh, and as I mentioned, she's from here in Kentucky. She later moved to Chicago where she developed a really incredible career for herself as an aeronautics expert. So let's talk a little bit about Willa Brown. Not only did she earn her pilot's license in 1938, but she also got a commercial license and a mechanic certificate as well. So that means that she could fly other people around and she could fix the exact same aircraft she was flying. She was the first black woman to become an officer in the Illinois Civil Air Patrol. And she also got a master's degree from Northwestern University. Obviously, Willa Brown was a barrier breaker and she had to fight in order to uh, be taken seriously and be able to get her license and degrees, etc. in the first place. So she needed to promote other black people participating in the, the aeronautics field as well. So one of the ways she did that was in 1936, she wore this super cool, uh, like adventuring pilot outfit with these uh, amazing looking boots. She stomped into a newspaper office called the Chicago Defender, and she decided to make a pitch in front of everybody uh, in front of the editor there because she wanted to host an African-American air show to be held at Harlem Field, which was in Chicago at the time. And the advertising from that resulted in about 200 to 300 people showing up uh, to attend this sort of giant showcase where it would only be black pilots and they would perform really cool stunts in biplanes and stuff like that. One of the other things she did was she co-founded the National Airmen's Association of America, and um, that was to help encourage black aviation cadets to go into the US military as pilots. Now the timing of her career is really important because as I mentioned, she founded all of these groups, she put on these air shows, she had um, degrees and certificates galore, but uh, by the 1940s, the US was gonna enter World War II, and so uh, you know they needed really skilled pilots. And so where would they turn for really skilled pilots? Well, Willa had the answer. She co-founded the Coffee School for Aviation. Coffee is the name of, of another guy that she worked with. Uh, but with the encouragement of that school, they started producing um, incredible black pilots that ended up being candidates for the Tuskegee Airmen. Tuskegee ended up being the perfect training ground for pilots. And in fact, uh, Willa herself trained over 200 of the Tuskegee Airmen to eventually go over to Europe and North Africa to fight. And they were so good at their jobs that white pilots would um, beg to have them help out their, their squadrons because they were so good at defending them from German flak and other ammunition and weaponry. And they just knew that they would be taken care of if the Tuskegee Airmen showed up. So ultimately by the end of the war, the Tuskegee Airmen were legendary. And that's all thanks to Willa Brown's help as well. Later on, towards the end of her career, she was finally given a lot of awards and the recognition that she really deserved for all of her help uh, in, in the field of aviation. She was later inducted into the Aviation Museum of Kentucky's Hall of Fame in 2003. So now it's time to get to our activity. And for today, I thought it would be really cool to create a stop motion film. Uh, I've been experimenting a lot with stop motion stuff. Um, if you don't have access to the apps on your parent's smartphone, for example, don't worry about it because there's an even simpler way to do it if you don't have the time or the, the tech at the moment. Uh, also, stop motion is really fun. So once you learn how to do it, please do continue to enjoy making films. It's a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, here's what we're making today. And uh, this was actually a pretty simple project because 
it's filmed on my kitchen table and it's all two dimensional. So all I did was create these drawings and I cut out the shapes and you have access to these as well. And then I kept my airplane in the middle of the frame and all I did was move my clouds inch by inch from one side of the frame to the other side of the frame to give it the effect of uh, an airplane flying overhead. So stop motion is just a series of photographs taken very quickly together. Um, and in the apps that we're going to use today, uh, and I'll give you some other options too, uh, but in the apps that we're using, you can actually take your time creating each frame piece by piece. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. The apps that I used are, um, you can use one of these. If you have an iPhone, Stop Motion Studio is free. I have an Android, so I used Life Lapse, and there's a free version of that as well. So um, just know that you do not have to buy anything <laughs> to make this at home. Uh, if you don't have access to apps or a smartphone, you can also use a digital camera and uh, just take a bunch of photos in succession and import them later, and then you can uh, see your photo series on a loop if you want. Next, you're gonna um, take the drawings that are included in the newsletter, and you're just gonna print that out. It's one sheet, and then you cut out the shapes. I also have some kid-friendly clouds as well if it looks too intimidating to cut out, so this can actually be very easy. If you don't have a printer, you can also use a toy airplane or uh, you can draw your own airplane and cloud shapes and cut those out as well. So first of all, before I open the app, I have to go into my settings. And the only thing that you have to make sure to do is to uh, not have your phone fall asleep on you while you're making your film. So I went into settings and display, and on my Android, I'm uh, selecting 10 minutes for my screen timeout. So that way uh, my phone doesn't fall asleep. Now, if you have an iPhone, um, there is an option for your uh, screen timeout to never fall asleep. So you wanna click that. Uh, next, I've opened Life Lapse and I'm gonna start a new project. So at the bottom, there's a camera icon because once again, we're just doing like a series of photos. And this is what the app looks like once you've opened it. So at the bottom, there are buttons for white balance and exposure. You can even play with the shutter settings. Don't worry about any of that stuff for today. We're just playing around with the stop part and the motion part of our project. Um, but this is actually meant to help you with lighting. So you wanna make sure that you have a bunch of lamps placed around your table uh, so that the lighting is consistent. I recommend not doing this by a big, beautiful window. And the reason is because when clouds go overhead, it's gonna create a different lighting and flickering in your video, but for today, that doesn't really matter. And in fact, based on the buttons you can see below, I believe I forgot to lock those settings. Um, so in the future, once you get better at creating stop motion videos, you want to uh, set up your phone and your camera and then lock those in place. So I did not have a tripod either, and you don't need one, so uh, here's what I did. I took a stack of books, a ruler and some masking tape. And I just uh, sort of bound it together <laughs> so that uh, my camera could overlook the flat surface. I wanna make sure that the tape does not cover my camera, obviously. So here I can still see the grid while my phone is taped into place. You wanna make sure that your phone doesn't like wobble around at all. And don't worry, there were no books harmed in the making of this video. So here's what the flat lay looks like. I've cut out my shapes and I've placed them under the camera in the way that I want to see them. And uh, once again, my airplane is going to stay still for the most part. And I'm just slowly inching the clouds little by little, and I'm going to take a new photo. What's really cool about this feature is that um, it sort of shows the ghost of what was there before. So uh, this effect is called onion skinning. So that way you can keep track of how far apart you're actually moving your pieces as your clouds travel from frame to frame. I only ended up taking about 10 to 15 photos and uh, each photo is one second. So we'll see if that's enough at the end.
in a new cloud off to the side. I need to figure out where I want it to be. And you basically just rinse and repeat. Uh, at a certain point, I tried to decide if I should bring the old clouds in again and start a new loop, but I'm happy with how short I kept this, I think. Once you reach a, a happy stopping place, you can also go back and replay what you've done so far. So once again, I think I only did about 12 photographs since the length of this is about 12 seconds. And here, once I've started creating this video, I just um, increased the playback speed. So you can do that too. In, in those apps, there should be features where you can add a filter to it, you can add music, uh, you can, you know, adjust the playback speed. So it just depends on how you want your final product to look. Let me know what you guys think and uh, if you had fun doing this. If you get stuck, my email address is included, so you're always welcome to shoot me a quick email um, if you're having any trouble. And here's what the final product looks like with a filter and some music. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.